It's the real news. I'm Aaron Maté. One week after an election that was too close to call, the Kansas Republican gubernatorial race has been decided. Secretary of State Chris Kobach has emerged as the winner, beating out his superior, the sitting governor, Jeff Collier. Kobach is notorious for advocating and orchestrating the nation's harshest voter suppression and anti-immigrant policies. This helped earn him an endorsement from President Trump, whom, whom Kobach says gets credit for his victory. I think it had a huge impact. There's no question, uh, certainly on election day voting, uh, we did very well. And that's part of the reason why when the, the provisional ballots were counted, uh, they went in our favor. And I think the president's endorsement uh, affected a lot of people's decisions uh, on that day, election day, because, of course, he endorsed me the day before. So no doubt it had a huge impact. Joining me is someone who has reported on Chris Kobach extensively and who, in fact, calls Kobach the Al Capone of vote rigging. Greg Pallast is an award-winning investigative journalist, author of books including The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, which he also turned into a film of the same name, which includes a very uh, notorious scene where Greg Pallast confronts K Chris Kobach. But before we get to that, Greg Pallast, welcome to The Real News. Uh, tell us about this man who you've been covering for a long time. Chris Kobach of Kansas, indeed the Al Capone of vote rigging. And uh, let me get to the specifics. Interstate cross-check, that's something that he operates for Republican Party secretaries of state in 27 states. And what it is, is a system of hunting down people who voted twice in two different states, according to Kobach and his patron, Donald Trump. Three million people voted twice in the last election. Three million people voted twice in 2008. That's why Obama supposedly won. Um, all these millions of people willing to go to jail for five years, that's the penalty for voting a second time in another state. Now, how, how does he know that these people have voted twice in other states? It turns out I'm the only journalist who actually got my hands on most of the lists of the 3 million double voters. It's actually a list of 7.2 million names of people with common names. Uh, Jose Garcia is accused of voting in 26 states. Um, now, in one state, it's Jose uh, Tomas Garcia. In another state, it's Jose Manuel Garcia. But they say it's the same voter. And you, I know you're going to say uh, Jose Garcia is a common name, not for Republican. The, the, the trick here is that they're just using first and last names, common names. In the United States of America, 85, the 100 most common surnames in the United States are minority names. David Garcia, David Kim uh, John Black, Jesse Jackson, these are common names, and that's the trick that they're playing there. That's just one of his tricks. The other is called the alien voter trick. He has claimed, Chris Kobach, as has uh, Donald Trump, that one million Mexicans swam the Rio Grande to vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, this would just be a joke, and it's been dismissed by the mainstream press. Don't dismiss it, because it's had real effects. States are purging people on the suspicion that they aren't Americans. How they know that they're suspicious? They have names like Jose Garcia. A guy named Jose Garcia was deported. He must have uh, you know, marched back across the border just to vote for Hillary. It wouldn't be a problem, except they're actually removing people from the voter rolls as we speak. The cross-check program removed 1.1 million voters before the 2016 election. We don't know how many so-called aliens are being removed, but we do know that Kobach stopped 36,000 Americans from voting in the 2016 election by saying that they didn't prove that they were citizens. When it went to federal court, he couldn't name a single person of the 36,000, not one, was known to be or proven to be an alien. But he did stop voting by two Air Force officers and a whole lot of students at the uh, University of Kansas. This is, and this, these are just two of the games he's playing. That ain't all. Well, before we go to more of those games, Greg, uh, let's go to a clip from The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, your film, because you not only obtained uh, the list of names targeted by Kobach's cross-check program, you went to Kobach himself and confronted him with that list. What is the point of sending a card to James Evans Johnson to prove that he is not James P. Johnson? 
What's the point of sending him a card? That should not be a, an individual who gets who's deemed a match. Uh, excuse me, but you say ignore the matches. You tell people to go. You tell the states. This is your. This is you, right? Kansas Secretary of State. You're. You're let's, the let's let's Kansas. Kansas Secretary of yeah. State. Let's this is you. Your... How come you have these as the same voter? Potentially That's the same voter. Not, our, our system would not yield them. This is from your system. But his system did target Johnson. All these are his matches. This is the list you gave Virginia, and on the basis of this list, you know that Virginia removed 41,000 voters based on the list you gave them? Um, that is false. But Virginia did cancel the registrations of these voters. Why lie? You have said that there is a massive problem with double voters. You've given out this list. These are not this double is the, voters. This, this is the list. You say it's potential double no, voters. No, 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 no. All of his own propaganda says potential duplicate voters, double voters, double votes. It's his own words. These documents cross-check with his wardrobe. You're the middle. You are a fool. This, wait, this is no. Look, I'm wasting is this. While the bullshit and secrecy about cross-check. Look at cross -check. these names. They don't match. Look, this is a random list of your Kobach state names. knows cross-checks just a con. Based on the Virginia data, they're going to knock out a million voters and steal the election. My turn. Go away. Go away. If cross-checks legit, why hide the lists? Why the lies? That's a scene from the movie, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. So, Greg Palast, in the clip there, you call Kobach a liar, but just how mm -hmm. big of a lie uh, was this that he was that you say he was telling you? Well, there, there's one thing where he was both prevaricating, I mean, there's a lot of mendacity in everything he says, but he is also some, some terrible truth, which is his list, which he does sell as a list of people voting twice, and that's what he and Trump are claiming. In fact, legally, its status is that he's sending these lists to other states as notice that, that people have moved. Now, they haven't moved. I talked to these voters, in fact, one, for example, on his list, Donald, um, Alexander Webster of Dayton, Ohio, in the swing state, was supposed to be the same voter as Donald Eugene Webster of Virginia. Now, that guy's not a double voter. I met him in Dayton. Here's what Kobach is now saying. Oh, they're not really double voters. They're people who've moved. Well, no, Donald Alexander Webster did not move to Virginia and change his middle name and add Junior to it. He's still in Dayton. Why does that matter? Because the Supreme Court of the United States on June 26th of this year, said it's okay to remove these people in Ohio and in Kansas and in Virginia and in uh, uh, you know 20 other states if they get a postcard and they don't return it because they've been on Cobox list. You only get the postcard if you've been on Cobox list. So all the David uh, Kims, uh, very common, common uh, Korean name, Jose Garcia's, Jesse Jackson's, get these cards. If they don't return them, about 80% of folks just think it's junk mail, throw it away. They lose their vote. This is huge. I mean, huge. And when I said 1.1 million people were removed from the voter rolls, according to uh, Ohio, they're removing half a million voters. That's one state, one swing state. This is gigantic. In fact, you see the effect, despite all the voter drives in the United States, despite kids marching out of parkland to, to, to register youth, despite a massive influx, for example, into Florida from, uh, um, from Puerto Rico, um, you, you see total Democratic voters, the total number of Democratic voters plummeting. Actually, two million voters altogether have been wiped off the voter rolls net. So imagine uh, the, the total number of registered voters has actually declined since the 2016 election which would be impossible without these mass purges coordinated by Chris Kobach. So Greg, you mentioned Kobach having difficulty uh, proving the legitimacy of his cross-check program in court. And he also had court troubles uh, with his other signature achievement, which was the so-called proof of citizenship law, where in order to register to vote, uh, one had to produce proof of citizenship. Um, during that went to court, uh, to, to district court in Kansas. Uh, during that trial, uh, he was reprimanded for contempt of court. And then not only was his law overturned, but he was then ordered to take about six hours of legal classes by the judge. 
Yeah, well, we're all, while we're all chuckling about it, he's going to have the last laugh. That was mm. a district federal judge appointed by George Bush, but obviously a judge who knows the law. It's going to go to the United States Supreme Court with the Mr. Kavanaugh on that court. And um, I have little doubt that, there, that uh, Chris Kobach is going to prevail with the, right to, uh, with the right to demand that you prove you're a citizen. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, that's okay. I mean, why shouldn't we prove we're a citizen? The answer is we're not Red China. We don't have citizenship cards. Sorry, your driver's license, your social security number, those are all held by um, legal aliens in America as well. You need a passport or an original birth certificate. And what they found from the evil experiment of this law in Kansas, what they found was that poor people, believe it or not, don't have passports. By the way, military service, you could be in, as we know, the, uh, we had two voters who were officers in the Air Force. Sorry, that doesn't prove you are an American citizen. We do have uh, resident aliens in the Air Force. Um, so, the, and a lot of students simply couldn't find or get a hold of their original birth certificate. What this becomes is a way to whiten the polls. It becomes a way to make it richer, older, whiter, the voter rolls, and that's what's gonna make the difference, and did make the difference. I, I'm telling you, um, in the latest version of my film, in the update, we've done the math. Donald Trump would not be president except for cross-check and the other Kobach vote suppression tricks. It's that cold. So it not only had an impact in Ohio, but also other critical states like uh, Michigan and Wisconsin? Yes, actually, I went to Michigan after the election and met with Kobach's henchmen, the, uh, the, the operatives in the office of the Secretary of State. And I was pretending that I thought, oh, Crosscheck's a wonderful program. And they said, oh, you know, they, they, they targeted, they targeted 300,000 voters in Michigan. And uh, they removed, uh, we uh, estimate about 50,000 Trump won supposedly in Michigan by 10,700 votes, but at, with their uh, what the state itself called its aggressive use of cross-check, um, basically he won because they did not allow tens of thousands of folk to vote for Hillary. We also had another trick that Kobach is very good at. Machines break down, and instead of saying, okay, let's, let's hand count the ballots, um, Instead of uh, saying, "Oh, we're not going to we're not going to count votes from machines um, that can't read these ballots," that's what they did in Michigan. In other words, let, let me let me see if I can say that in a clearer way. In Michigan, one of the other tricks that they pulled, which Kobach also quarterbacks, is simply not counting votes where there's been a machine breakdown. In Michigan, they use paper ballots, but machine robot readers. Well, if the robot can't read your ballot, that doesn't mean that you haven't cast a good ballot. In Michigan, there were ready. 75,355 ballots that were cast and never counted. And those are exclusively in Detroit and Flint, Michigan, black cities. You count those ballots, Hillary won. In Wisconsin, we had a very similar situation, Pennsylvania, just those th three states alone. And it looks like some of the games also turned over North Carolina, Arizona, Iowa, and a couple of other states. There's, you know, uh, without the trickery, Trump wouldn't be president. This is why this stuff is serious and why Kobach is a dangerous man, despite a judge saying, you know, he's a clown in a courtroom, but he is one dangerous clown to American democracy. And quite possibly the next governor of Kansas, uh, Greg Palast, investigative journalist, author of the book, The Best Democracy money can buy and director of the film of the same name. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.